make you say to win. Play for a race, race more, I'm not always score. If the first game of race more, get you loaded up, put on more steam. Today, I'm kicking our quarterback, I'll lead our ball game. All obstacles, block, cut, side, two games after this win. Press you again, we're for the first play. Can everybody keep that for six minutes? Rocky Town! <laughs> Unbelievable place. Great, great university. Knoxville is unbelievable city. Great people. The passion for football is even greater than I thought it would be. And man, you know, Neyland Stadium, I said it, you know, a couple of years ago, and I still think it's the best football experience for a college football fan or a player in the country. Just look around. You got the mountains, you got the most beautiful city in the whole entire country. The university is absolutely, looks like it's out of a storybook. It's just beautiful. People are incredibly genuine and, and extremely nice. It's just a place that obviously I'd want my kids to go to school. And it sells itself. You don't have to sell anything about this place. It, you just got to get them here. You know, the old field of dreams. Yeah. Build it and they will come. It's already built. And it, you have to not lose the game before you can ever win the game. <laughs> Welcome to the Dog and Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. And I'm Coach Jay. Coach, we got, we might have somebody I'm fired spying. Up, man. I'm we might fired have somebody up. spying. You better be careful. They may be getting there. You go. There you go. We got you dialed in now. Coach Jay's got a big one tonight. Uh, we don't have a big one tomorrow, but we're going to talk about it anyway. It's the Friday morning show. Last opportunity to jump on here and talk some Tennessee football going into the Austin P game, the glorified scrimmage. Man, I, I have a hard time, Coach. You know this because we talk all the time. I have a hard time separating real life from social media. Like the, the people on social media, what do you think about me going into this game, calling it a glorified scrimmage? It's going to be a blowout, laughing about it. It ain't like we're in the locker room. No, heck no. You know, uh, you got to give every every team respect and their due and all that good stuff. But uh, uh, the nice the nice thing is I get to take my uh, my coaching hat off uh, from time to time and and put my volunteer fan hat on and uh, and I can call Austin P a uh, a glorified scrimmage all I want, you know, and and have a little bit of fun with it, and that's part of the fun of being a fan. So, 
we're gonna it's have some good. we're gonna have some fun today. One person we're gonna have some fun with is Butch Jones. We're gonna take a look at some funny comments from him. Uh, we're also gonna take one last look at this Austin P game. We're gonna talk about Nico Ia Maliava. He's been all over the news today. Look, man, you put Nico's name on an article, people click on it and read it. You put his name on a video, people click on it and watch it. Uh, but he was in the news this week because of Hypo's comments. Should really come as no surprise to anybody. Uh, but let's run down the chat, see who is here bright and early, see who's hanging out. On Talking Balls Live, Tyler Pollock is here. Home opener sold out. I was wondering about that. I wasn't sure uh, if they would sell this game out. Bob King's in the house. What is up, Bob? Uh, Carl is here. What's up, Carl? Noah James in the house. Mrs. Coach J. So who's working? Does anybody in your family actually work on Friday morning? She, she's working from home. So she's she's technically working. Working. <laughs> Quote, unquote. <laughs> Joey Carroll's in the house. What is up, buddy? Kelly Goodwin is here. Hewitt is here. Uh, make sure you guys do come on in, smash the thumbs up, share out the link, man. Hit share. Let somebody know that we're live. Uh, let's run down some super chats. You guys being very generous right out of the gate. Noah James for two dollars says door fee. GBO Austin P knows what this is. Yeah, they know what they're getting into on Saturday. Look, they're not dumb. Donovan's here. Long time no see, brother. Good to see you in the chat. Five dollar super chat. Jesse Palmer on SEC this morning just said he was impressed with Joe Milton. Said the balls are definitely a team to watch for the college football playoff. You think so? Why not us? Why not now? Right. I've been saying it for two weeks. Yeah. You know, it's, Hey, you know, we all envision, uh, these perfect seasons in our mind, right? Like, uh, Oh, you know, Nico's going to come in and all the young recruits are going to fall in into place perfectly, but why not now? Right. The, the time should always be now. You should always be pressing to get better, but you shouldn't ever put anything, um, on the back burner, we kind of had a laugh about it the other day when we were watching a, a hype press conference and a reporter asked, you know, uh, you know, are you just kind of in a holding pattern? And, and that's just not football at all. You're never in a holding pattern. You're always in a in a go, go, go pattern. You're always in a in a win right now pattern. And it it's the machine, man. It can't slow down. It can't ever stop. It's got to be uh, all gas all the time, you know, foot on the pedal, pedal to the metal. And let's go, man. Let's let's go and let's get victories. Let's get better and keep on working and uh, and put W's up on the board until we get in that dang playoff. Papa J for five. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. Door fee paid. Let's go big orange. I feel like Papa J just wants me to say that. I think he wants me to read it that way every mm -hmm. time. Uh, thank you, John. Appreciate that, brother. Tyler Coggins for five. Go balls. Ready to see those smoky grays, baby. Uh, you've not been on the show since then. What you what you think of the uh, the smoky grays? Tennessee is going to roll out there on Saturday. Pay homage. I, I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I guess you call me an in betweener. I I I like the old school, and I'm all good with staying old school. But I also I also don't mind a little 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 dark mode uniform and switching it up from time to time. I thought the helmets were 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 particularly really cool and uh sharp but uh overall you know maybe give the uniforms a uh, a b plus in the uh, the helmet and a kaylin justice is in the house thank you for the five dollar super chat cannot wait to be in neeland tomorrow mm -hmm. gbo uh oops wrong one ron the dawn for 10 thank you for the super chat my friend hey austin p is my hometown college but still it's all orange gbo hey boogie coach jay let's go I didn't even know what is it? Is it Austin P State University? Because people say APSU. What is the, it? It has to be state. What? What? I, I'm so confused. I'm going to look it up. I've got to look it up because I feel like talk, we're talking about Monmouth and nobody Monmouth. knows. Yeah, Austin P State University. There you go. Interesting. Yep. I don't. I don't catch too many of the games in that league. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little little William and Mary or. Uh... <laughs> Or something of that nature, but uh, no, I don't catch too many uh, of that division. Um, Man, but I'm sure it's good. Trying to watch some local high school football last night. Eric Kane and Austin Price on the I call. Seen that. Man, the Greenville, Greenville. I almost feel sorry for them at this point. They're four games into the year. They've had two games canceled for Lightning, so they're they're <laughs> one and one with two games thrown out. Uh, what that that sucks. Those kids, you know, those kids put in work and then they go out and have two of their games just canceled. It's like mm. kissing your sister. Uh, Donovan Milliken with another five dollars. Appreciate that, brother. Nico will be the greatest quarterback in Tennessee history. He will be the first pick of the 2026 NFL draft. I hope you're right. We're going to talk a lot about Nico on the show today. Matt Mars for five. Excited to be back in Neyland. Taking my youngest daughter to her first game. She loves singing Rocky Top, so this could be uh, should be the perfect game. 
Awesome, Matt. That's what it's all about, buddy. The people that you go to the games with, mm-hmm. those experiences, those moments, uh, you'll never forget it, and neither will she. I promise you that. Uh, Nate Pruitt for five. Thank you for the super chat. Here's my cover charge. Appreciate this, balls, fam. Look forward to this every day. GBO. Thank you, Nate. Glad you enjoy what we do around here. Let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Let's start this thing off with a little bit of a joke, and then we're going to come back around. We're going to talk about Austin P. We're going to talk about uh, Nico and everything in between. Butch Jones finds himself back in the news today. Uh, you guys heard the clip. You know, Elijah asked me to play it on the intro, but I'll, I'll play it again because it is kind of funny. It's a typical Butch Jones. And it, you have to not lose the game before you can ever win the game. Butch Jones always finds himself in the media. Uh, what, what did you think about Butch when he was here? He, he was really so close, had a lot of talent, misused some of that talent. He was close to having Tennessee back where they needed to be, really close. Yeah, you know, I – my whole thing with Butch, uh, I, hey, listen, I'm all for coach speak and I'm all for, uh, you know, rah, rah and, and cool little slogans and, and fun sayings, but it all doesn't amount to, to a heck of beans if, if it's empty, right? If, if those bricks are hollow and they're, and they're going to fall over anyways, it really doesn't matter how many of them we stack. And the problem with Butch is, I don't think he was a true coach and a true, and when I say a true coach, I mean a true teacher of the game Mm. of football. And I think uh, that was the problem. And when you're not a true teacher of the game in football, I think you can fall too short in, in two of the most important categories that we talked about in great length over the, the film breakdown series boogie, which is uh, first evaluation (laughs) and then development. Right. So if you fail at evaluation and development, well, you know, you saw what could happen with it. And I do think uh, Josh Dobbs bailed out Butch quite a bit with his legs mm-hmm. and his playmaking and his IQ, too. You know, I think it's the the part of, of Dobbs we maybe talk about a little less. I mean, I know it was a, a popular thing to talk about that, you know, he's an astrophysicist and flying to space and all this cool stuff. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, he was a very smart quarterback who made very good decisions. And uh, those good decisions at times uh, could mask poor coaching, uh, by Butch Jones. And I thought he, I thought he caught a couple, uh, you know, special players, uh, as well across the defensive side. Of course, Derek Burnett comes to mind, um, um, immediately, but, uh, yeah, I think he was on borrowed time. Um, yeah, it's, you know, he gave us that big win against Florida in 16. Uh, I was at that game with, uh, I believe that was Mrs. Coach Jay's first time in Rocky Top. So uh, a fun game. I believe you were on site too that day uh, as well, Boogie. And uh, a cool day. I think Miss Jay got to meet Tyler Bird <laughs> at Cal- Calhoun's on Thursday before. And I actually think I ended up saying hi to butch jones or i don't know i ended up talking to him for a second anyway like uh as he was walking out but um the dude was high strung too that's the other thing like you know i was around hypo for maybe two three minutes at the nico you know when i was on the field with nico and coach p out there at warren but coach hype is just so chill and relaxed and down to earth like Butch Jones, you wanted to give him a Xanax or something. You know what I mean? The guy just sent extremely high strung. Yeah, it's like it's a lack of confidence, I think, is the best way to describe him. And that's why that's why this article and all this stuff is so funny, right? Because it's like the the jokes write themselves. Like you can't help but scroll through social media and if Butch says something stupid, A to Z Sports is gonna be all over it. Zach Reagan's gonna have it out there on Twitter. I'm gonna see it and I'm gonna laugh about it, but you know, Butch is so far in the rearview mirror, but I look back on his time at Tennessee, man. I gave him probably longer than anybody. Everybody was ready to fire him, and I'm like, no, let's give Butch a chance. You know, he, he just – I don't know if he if it was stargazing. Like, he was a used car salesman, right? And, and it, you know, it's like when we get in the arguments about five stars versus three stars. Clearly, player evaluation is more important than what on three thinks. If Josh Heupel doesn't know how to evaluate a player, we got huge problems that are going to come out sooner rather than later. Uh, but I think Bush just kind of st- chase those stars and you're going to get lucky. There are more five stars that are going to hit than there are three stars that are going to be five star caliber players. Uh, so I think he got lucky with that. But let, let's roll out and take a look at it. Look at like high strung 
is the perfect description. Look at his face. But the clip, you know, you had this one, which was on ESPN, where his players are consoling him because he lost 73 to nothing. Uh, then the clip that I just played right there, you, you can't – you've got to not lose before you can win. Uh, and then here's what Butch said about the negativity. A lot of negativity floating around social media. I don't check that at all. I mean, I, I would – I would hope there would be people that would be upset. I mean, they, need, they have passion, but also I know that a lot of that is from another fan base. So I don't pay much attention to that. Um, and I, I guess the thing is, whether it's another fan base or whether it's this fan base or whoever it is, they care because they're watching. So they must have some invested interest to watch. Uh, it is Butch Joe. He sounds like me preaching YouTube. Make him love you or hate you, but don't ever let him forget you. Like, what are you doing, Butch? Uh, it's just just comical, comical. I, I love the the mindset of I don't see that stuff, but I'm going to talk about it plain as day. I know exactly what's going on on social media at all times. You know, he runs his Twitter account. He's all over Twitter and he's all over social media. He sees it. Yeah, yeah, he certainly sees it. And I mean, yeah, how much money has the guy made? You know, yeah. he, he's made a ton of money and uh, I'm sure there's a certain part of him that, you know, is is like, hey, I got my bag. Who gives a crap what what the Tennessee fan base thinks about me? But I, I'd be willing to wager that uh, deep down inside uh, Butch Jones knows that he failed here and, and he knows that he was uh exposed here and i think that's why he you know was able to take a little little bite of humble pie and and get on the support staff of bama and maybe make an attempt to try to better himself uh which is what you you really should do as a coach me personally i i don't think he was ready to step into a head coaching role immediately after that i think he should have maybe taken another couple bites of that humble pie and, and, and gone on as a uh, coordinator on staff somewhere. And, and, you know, when you're struggling at anything, whether it be baseball, football, or golf, um, you always like to go back to the beginning, right? To go back to fundamentals, to go back to what, what made you great, what made you good. And, um, I think Butch maybe missed an opportunity to to strip out down, uh, you know, all the BS and uh, you know, bull crap that surrounds what happened to him and and get back to football. And I think that's that's where he failed. And I think that's why you're seeing it on scoreboards. Uh, hey, Arkansas State, uh, that's a that's a good little school. They've had great teams over the last twenty years, conference championships and. Hey, listen, I know you shouldn't have won that game, but you also shouldn't have got the break speed off you by 70. So uh, Butch maybe needs another uh, uh, bite of humble pie and get back to his roots and his basics and and uh, take the game seriously. I keep giving away the game plan over here. My seat rolls. I know. You keep, you're, somebody's moving your camera back over there to I see the, what all the calls are. Dude, I, they, yeah. My favorite call on the screen, guys. Bubblegum, Razor, Stingray. I know. I know. I got something for him tonight. I just hope you're in a good mood tomorrow. I hope you get the dub tonight and come in. It's going to be <laughs> awful if you don't. Pressure's on. Pressure's, Pressure's on. on. Pressure's Co on. Coach Jay's got a little agenda tonight. I get a little special something, something for him. Let me catch up on Super Chats because a lot of you guys wanting to insult Butch Jones. Seth Justice is here for $2. Thank you, Seth. AP uh, logo is the Pringle guy. Smokey is better. I, I don't even think I could tell you what they're – Oh, they're the governors. They're the governors. Thank you, Seth. Oh, yeah, super chat. Yeah. Uh, Wayne's in the house. What's up, Wayne? Five dollars super chat says Butch. Please, I had a shirt that said that. It popped up on a memory uh, just recently. Oh, it's awful, awful, awful time. Set the four for five. We are here, brick by brick, cleats in the ground, knees to nuts. Good morning, everybody. What a great super chat. That's the way to start your day, right there, Seth. Uh, way to give a good sixty-three effort, uh, Carl. For two, thank you for super chat. Have you seen the APSU special white uniforms too? They're fire. Mm, no, I have, I have not. not. I no, haven't no, seen I haven't that. Huh. I haven't seen that. Uh, Noah James for five. Thank you for the super chat. Will Jay Wright be tapping his helmet a lot tomorrow? Uh, I hope he'll be standing on the sideline for most of the day, if I was guessing. 
Uh, but uh, man, he got to get in shape. You got to get in shape. You got to be able to finish off those drives, J. Rob. We got to get you in the end zone and not let uh, the fantasy king Dylan Sampson come in and swipe those touchdowns. Ron the Don for another ten dollars. Appreciate that, brother. Hello, downtown Clarks. We have a statue of Sergeant Carter from Gomer Pyle. It is Butch Jones for real. Oh man, I would love mm. to see a picture of that. Thank you for the super chat, Billy Todd for two. Appreciate that, brother. Dorfy. GBO. All right, guys, appreciate the donations. Y'all being very generous this morning. Let's talk a little football. Coach hasn't been on the show in a while. I like it this way. I like finishing up the week with Coach Jay. Uh, let's talk about around the league in week one. How how are your thoughts coming out of, of week one of college football? LSU getting embarrassed by Florida State. I think it was 31-7 to seven in the second yeah. half alone. Just, to, just pulled away. Did LSU quit? That's a question a lot of people are talking yes. about. Clemson embarrassed by Duke. Uh, and I, I get it, man. You got you're playing teams like MTSU, Mercer, Western Carolina. Uh, but Florida and South Carolina are the big ones that stuck out for me. I know we did talk a little bit about Florida on Saturday. What are your thoughts uh, about around the league and then moving ahead, how it impacts Tennessee? Any any change, how you feel about the game next week? Mm, about the Florida game, you know, I've gotten a chance to watch quite a bit of the Florida film. It, it's, it's tough, you know, because – you can see ways in places that Florida has improved. And it was the type of thing where I necessarily didn't even catch it on, on the first watch, but um, on second watch and, and yeah, they looked bad. They looked out of sorts. They looked like they had, um, you know, no urgency, no fire in them, which is really weird against the top 25 matchup on the road. You got to come out hot and, and swinging with, uh, with both fists. But, um, you know, they looked like a better coached team with less athleticism, uh, speed and talent. And then the talent that they do have that was shining out was very young. So it was still making, uh, uh, very green mistakes. So could I see Florida showing improvement this week? Yeah, sure. Uh, could I see them paddling backwards a little bit and, uh, you know, losing a locker room to a degree? Uh, yeah. What does that mean against McNeese state? Uh, right. you know, probably you, you've been talking about it a lot lately, Boogie on this channel, actually, is it going to be one of those things where Florida, is hoping for two late touchdowns so it looks like they took care of business you know it, will their fans be kind of hoping for those last couple scores so that the game you know looked like it was a little more out of hand than it actually was i think that will you know remain be remain to be seen with florida so uh we'll see i think billy needs time in that program i don't know if he's going to get that time in florida uh, going around to the rest of the league, uh, you know, I, th I think Bama, um, I thought their defense looked, looked, you know, a little better than last year, but it's hard to tell, man. They were playing middle Tennessee mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Milro, I mean, he was doing Superman stuff. That first touchdown run he scored. I don't know if anyone saw it where he, he broke out of a sack and, uh, you know, made a couple guys miss, you know, it looked like a, Looked like he should be wearing that that Superman cape, you know, when he made that touchdown. But then once again, who's he making that play against? So Bama, of course, will get their test this week against Texas, a team that came out uh, not only vanilla, but kind of translucent almost, man. They didn't they didn't want to show everything. They were as vanilla as could be. They looked like uh, they struggled at times in their opener, even though the score didn't necessarily show it. And uh, I think it was just a byproduct of them being vanilla. Uh, I think the seven-point spread is about about correct, and I think you see Bama winning by seven. Now, if Texas can can shut down Milrow's legs, can can he deliver enough passes where they need to be to win that game? We might find out uh, a little something about Milrow this week. Um, you know, I, what else is going on in the SEC? You got that Ole Miss Tulane matchup. Uh, I know some people like Tulane in that game. I tend to think Ole Miss takes care of business with, with Tulane missing a lot of people, but, um, yeah, yeah. It, we're going to find out a little bit more about Bama this week and the, and the rest will have to wait. Is that, is that what you do? Is that your game plan? If you're playing Alabama's drop everybody in coverage 
or, or excuse me, stack the box and, and make him beat you with his arm. The opposite of what I just said there. Nice, nice Friday morning blunder there. But just try to make Milrow beat you with his arm. You know, I mean, he's just so athletic, man. So athletic. Yeah. If I'm a defense coordinator, I'm going to make him beat me once, right? Over the top. Absolutely. Um, you might even see some cover zero, although that's a scary proposition when you're playing Alabama. And I get that. I think you see it sprinkled in in patches. Uh, I think you see a lot of uh, show and go blitzes. I think you see a lot of, uh, you know, show blitzes, drop back everyone, or maybe even bring edges and and keep a spy over the middle. Uh, you'll see uh, a lot of different variations. They're going to want to confuse uh, Milrow since he hasn't had a lot of time to acclimate into the quarterback position. So I think multiple would be the name of the game for me if I was coordinating for Texas on Saturday. Yeah, the chat's talking about the Florida game. That that's the one that I just think, you know, I have I've said it all offseason. That's a game that is it concerns me. Going on the road, you're playing Florida on the road in the swamp, seven o'clock kick. Gonna be hostile. Crowd's gonna be fired up. And you talk about Billy Napier needing time. That that fan base doesn't want to give him time. They're are they're already starting to uh put put a little gasoline on the fire on Billy Napier. And you know, can he keep his recruiting class together if he struggles? Uh, but that 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 fan base is gonna be fired up and rowdy on Saturday night in the swamp for those reasons alone because they you know if they start off one and two and their only win is over mcneese state i don't know what their schedule looks like i don't have their schedule pulled it's up vicious. in front of me it's, it's going to be a long season it is going to be a long season but you know tennessee favored by a touchdown on the road i think that tells you any uh, not any concern but our concerns are all about history the past struggles in the swamp just like alabama 15 years of misery there's a reason why because we've lived through it we've been through it some of these kids on this team didn't they didn't care what tennessee was doing seven years ago uh they didn't care they and that's why you know i talk about the, the al wilson's and the leonard littles these kids have no idea who those players are that's why it's great seeing alvin Kamara being down there in nashville for the tennessee virginia game because he's a guy the players do know they do recognize they realize as an nfl player uh times have changed man uh, we lived through some bad, bad times, and it's been a while since we experienced some excitement on Rocky Top. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm feeling a little bit more confident about that Florida game like you guys in the chat talking about. I think yeah. they're going to be able to get pressure. What scares me is is a quarterback like Milrow that can run for Alabama. That That's what scares me versus a guy like Mertz, who I just don't think is going to hurt you with his legs. All right, let's talk a little bit about the game coming up on Saturday. Tennessee, Austin P. I guess we will start. Oops trying to share the link and get somebody invited on the show here. I, I guess we'll start with the big news that came out earlier this week, and that is the the injury, man. The injury to Keenan Peely, if I can find the article there. Injury to Keenan Peely, and the first thing everybody starts talking about is Arian Carter. Arian Carter is going to come in, but that's that's not the case, Coach. It's it's likely to be Elijah Herring. He's the backup for Keenan Peely. You know, we, we've talked about this linebacker room. We've talked about the depth, but also – you know, the athleticism of Keenan Peely, what he added to, to your starting linebackers, but also the depth. Uh, it's it's This is why you need depth because it's a physical game. It's a physical league. Injuries happen. Uh, originally, I think Heifel said two weeks. Uh, then he updated. He said, I anticipate as we go over the next couple of weeks, we'll kind of figure out what timeline is for him. Hopefully, we're able to get him back here in the middle part of the season. So going to be a little bit longer than two weeks. I'm wondering if He's going to miss the entire first half of the season. But what, what are your thoughts when you saw the injury? What do you think about Elijah Herring? Uh, how uh, they step in and take care of business? Yeah, when I when I originally saw the injury and was reading about it a little, uh, you know, it's a it's a typical linebacker injury, and the fir my first thought was no earlier than A uh, and M will we see Peely back? Uh, so that was kind of my my knee jerk reaction uh, it, it, as far as the linebackers taking him his place yeah you're gonna see uh herring you know above carter will they slide carter over i don't know that they necessarily will they kind of have the depth and, and you're gonna need to get beasley blows so there's plenty of of playing time out there for arian uh on the field certainly will they slide him over to that weak side yeah possibly maybe we'll see it a little i don't think we'll necessarily see it week one i think you want to give him a little a uh, little time on the grass to to kind of figure that out um I did go back uh, after the injury and watch the Virginia game and, you know, really put an orange circle around Herring and, and follow him around the field quite a bit. And he was out there quite a bit in that game. Uh, he looked fast. 
you know, he looked, he looked extremely fast. He was hunting the ball extremely quickly. Um, he looked good in his wall offs, uh, for the slants. Uh, he was, I would say maybe a B grade it, it covering the flats. One thing that concerns you with a young linebacker, and we saw it happen to, to Arian once in the game is, you know, a lot of times offense coordinators, if they catch you cheating with your hips a little bit, when you're walling off the slant coming at you, they'll run a receiver right back down your other side if you're turning your hips too much and they'll run that kind of that double that slant and then post you know like a slant and then a post behind it and if they get you turning too much they can whistle that through your ear and, and we saw that happen to arian carter on the on the touchdown drive uh on the post catch there so uh i'd like to see these young linebackers really practice good uh, uh discipline with their hips and not open them up to the point where they're playing flat. Uh, it's something I'll have my eye on uh, this Saturday. I don't know how much you put into PFF, Pro Football Focus, and their grading. I like it. Uh, you know, Kaner talks a lot about it, uses it a lot on his show. Something he says is, you know, the guys that are grading these these players – they don't know what the calls are. They don't know what the responsibilities are. So there's a lot that goes into it. But so I, I like to look at it just to kind of give me a gaze. Now, to, to, to be funny is I thought, okay, I'm sidebarring here, but this is what happens when I start talking about something like pro football focus. I thought Andre Carrick played good football on Saturday. I did not think he played great, but, you know, we, we've kind of talked about it with DBs. Same thing I talked about with Kaner yesterday on his show. Andre Carrick. He didn't stand out. Like, if an offensive lineman plays bad, you're talking about him after the game. Now, if he plays good, maybe you're not. He does something like John Campbell and runs somebody through the tunnel, then you're talking about that. But if they play good, you know, you're not really talking about him after the game. And Andre Carrick graded out at 40. 40. That's terrible. So, again, what are they watching? Now, Kaner did tell me that they changed the grade and it got up to like 60-something. So, take pro football focus for what it's worth. But these are the grades for the defensive players on Saturday against Virginia. You can see there Elijah Herring grading out towards the top of the entire defense, 78.6 on 24 plays. He's a guy that's got a lot of experience, too. He led the team in tackles on Saturday, which is not always the end-all, be-all story. Played in 13 games a year ago. A lot of special teams play. But, again, led the teams in tackles. I think Elijah Herring, I think this is an opportunity. You know, obviously we want Keenan Peely out there. He came in through the portal for a reason. He brings leadership. He's also athletic. That's something Heupel talked about, you know, a couple couple of weeks ago. He was kind of surprised at the athleticism that Keenan Peely brought to the table. But I don't know if you guys watch Jocko Willink. I love the the viral clip of him talking about, oh, you got a flat tire on the way to work? Good. You didn't get any sleep. You're supposed to go to the gym today. You're tired. You don't have energy. Good. It's yeah. an opportunity. Every Everything that happens is an opportunity. We don't want Keenan Peely to go down, but he goes down. Good. It's time for Elijah Herring to grow up in a hurry, and he's got a week to get ready, right? This this is a week to get ready because the season starts next week against Florida. But I, I think Elijah's going to be a good player, man. I think he's going to be a really good football player. Yeah, I think he's going to be a great player. Uh, I, You know – I'd like to see Big O on this list. I thought he played a great game. I don't know what he graded out or um, or if this is just kind of the very top and he graded below it, but I I certainly Pretty thought – Yeah, I, I certainly thought Omari Thomas and uh, uh, Lot particularly – uh, had a huge push on the entire in in the entire game. Every play that they were out there, uh, they moved their offense alignment back, and they didn't always move them back with size. They did it with technique quite a bit as well. I know um, there were three or four plays where all four defense alignment had pushed them back. Uh, maybe a yard or two into the backfield. And when you can get that, it's impressive. Their hand placement along the defensive line uh, last Saturday was elite. Their footwork last Saturday on the defensive line was elite. Their speed across the defensive line last Saturday uh, was elite. Um, I get that it's Virginia. I get that they you know, are replacing, what was it, five out of six defensive linemen. But... Um, no matter who you're playing, they looked good. They looked fundamentally sound across that defensive line, and they looked deep. Uh, I like Tyler Barron, man, though. He he looked 
he looked slimmed down to me and much more athletic and much more comfortable in, in the body that he's in. So I'm excited to see what what he can do. I think he can really build on not only last week, but his Orange Bowl performance as well, Boog. I'm in a super chat real quick here from Sammy P. Been waiting for a while. $2 super chat. Appreciate that, brother. Says porch fee. I guess Sammy P is sitting on the front porch. <laughs> drinking a cup of coffee, listening to a little Talking Balls Live. Appreciate you, you guys go. choosing us on this Friday morning. Uh, we're going to be live every single Friday morning at 10 a.m. 10 a. Eastern time, a little bit earlier for Coach Jay out there in California. Going to try to get a guest on next week. Next week is Florida week. Look, Saturday, as soon as the clock hits zero, it's Gator Hater week. It's, it's on. I'm going to try to build up a special week of guests. We'll see who comes on. Of course, we got Eric Kane in the house every Monday morning. Maybe we can get somebody special that was just recently on the channel to come hang out on Wednesday night. Uh, we shall see. But make sure you tuned in, dial in, smash the thumbs up, share out the link, all that good stuff. Sometimes I say that, and I feel like it goes in one ear and out the other. But if you guys would hit that share button, hit Twitter, boom, post it, done. Hit share, boom, Facebook, Facebook done. Uh, put it on MySpace. Yeah. Put us in your top eight, all that good stuff. Set your, your song, your profile song. To Rocky Top, but it does help if you guys share out the show. So uh, we would appreciate that. You you talking about the defensive line and full circle going back to Butch Jones and and not really developing players, and then you're talking about the defensive line and their technique and the way they're using their hands. And obviously, Coach Garner, one of the best in the business, uh, coaching the defensive line. But something interesting I heard Austin Price talking about on one of their one of their podcasts. He's got McAllen Castles coming up on the Ball Club Confidential or whatever it's called. Uh, and he said that McAllen Castles, one thing that blew his mind was they were talking about run blocking. You know, the tight ends, that's a big part of their responsibilities at Tennessee is the run game, run blocking. He said McAllen Castles, he's like, you know, I did it, and I was willing to do it at UC Davis. They never taught me how to do it. They just said, go block this guy. Here's where you need to be. And what you know, <laughs> he's like, I had no idea about t- technique, hand placement. Yeah. He's like, I just went and hit the guy. Like, I, I didn't know. We've got sure. developers. We've got teachers. Teachers is a word you used earlier. That's what mm-hmm. this coaching staff is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, both tight ends look great against the block. I, I talked about it after the game. Uh, you know, Jacob Warren had had two flat backs in that game. Uh, McAllen Castles had one. Uh, he looked good blocking. Uh, he looked good running in the open field when he had the ball. Uh, I did pick on him just a little bit for that that fourth and one uh, that I, I didn't even want us to go for it anyways. But uh, he did. He did. <laughs> Uh, uh, miss a block on that play that I think would have would have had us picking up the first down. So, uh, you know, you live, you learn. Uh, Virginia is definitely the place we want to see that kind of stuff happen. Uh, so, you know, you can get a uh, a laser pointer thrown at you in the film room later. Which is good. That That's yep. good. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, with, with, with the film room and learning and growing and, and live reps and all that type of stuff, something that came out this week on Vol Calls, uh, you know, somebody asked about whether or not Hypel was going to trying to red shirt Nico Iamaliava, which is no, there's no, that was never the plan. It was never going to be the plan. Uh, we're hoping to see a whole lot of Nico on Saturday. And one, one of the comments that I like from Joey Halsley when he was talking about it, and, and this is the exact quote I've got it here, uh, says one, just to take the field in front of that many people and calm your nerves down and trust your eyes. Sometimes you call a play. You don't remember what that play is. It's like, wait, what is that? You know what I mean? Like your first time in there. He says, just getting that adrenaline spike and then calm yourself back down, that's huge. He says, you're going to have a multitude of pressures and coverages, and it's going to be great for everyone to see that. He says, because that's a huge eye-discipline game, which, once again, whether he's an older backup or a young guy coming in for his first couple of snaps, uh, it's a huge game for him to have to define his eyes. What what are your thoughts on what can Nico learn by going out and playing against Austin P on Saturday versus what he can learn on the practice field or or in a good-on-good scrimmage or 11-on-11? Uh, different, different situational things on the practice field. What's what's the difference? What can Nico really learn on Saturday? Uh, you know, I think he can just continue to build on what he he already has shown. Um, you know, Nico is an extremely calm person on the football field, and, and I'm sure a lot of you caught that in his limited time on Saturday, right? He's just he's just he's Fonzie out there, right? Like he's cool all the time on the football field. He can internalize a lot of that. So I think just the more time that he has, um, you know, on a college football field in front of a college football fan base, especially Neyland in particularly is, you know, that it don't get no bigger than Neyland, right? It really doesn't. So, 
uh, you want to get used to the the rumble of the Coliseum, if you will, the feel of what that's like. Uh, you know, the the field over there in Warren in Downey is much different than the field in Neyland, I promise you. And Nico, you know, has been to every elite camp. He's seen multitudes of elite players. Uh, but once again, he's seen a lot of high school concepts and the concepts just continue to get more complex. Uh, more confusion is abound and uh, you need to get comfortable with that. And then just continuing to understand what Hypel wants to do, the, the process of Hypel's offense. Um, I know Nico was a quick study and I've heard uh, the coaching staff talk about how quickly he picked up the full playbook and he understands it and, and can digest it. Now, the next step is really the maturation of being able to understand exactly why the check or not check or which audible is pertinent in which situation, which route tree combination is correct. I don't know how many you know, different route tree variations we're going to get against Austin P and, and how much variation we're going to get in the offense. But I certainly hope that Hypel, you know, uh, lets off the reins just a little bit when Nico's on the field and, and lets him at least, you know, really rip that ball and get comfortable uh, watching it soar through the, through the air over uh, Neyland. Yeah, I mean, what's the point of putting him out there and just handing the ball off, right? And I yeah. think Hypel's kind of shown that in previous – you know, he did it with Milton last year. When Milton yeah. came in and mop-up duties, he threw the football around. And some people, uh, like UT Martin, didn't like that. But, you know, what's the, what's the point of putting in a backup that needs to learn, needs to develop, needs to grow? It, it's a unique time. You know, I made a video, I guess, yesterday, whenever it was that they announced this about Nico and it was kind of taken off in the news and talking about how unique the quarterback room is now, right? Because ideally – Josh Heupel should have been set up beautifully. Like, Nico shouldn't have the pressure to be QB2 as a true freshman. Ideally, you would want, you know, Joe out there starting, 72-year senior, however long he's been playing college football. I forget that he's a six-year senior. Like, I said fifth year, and somebody's like, boogie, he's a six-year senior because of the COVID year. But, yep. you know, you should have that veteran guy, and then you should have a Taven Jackson, right, that's got two years in the system, sure. a guy that knows, like you're talking about, why you're making those checks, why you're doing this, why you're doing that. Uh, and you've got that guy, and that gives Nico a year to grow. But he's QB2 right now. If something happens and Joe goes down, Nico is in the game. That's it. Like, there's no – it's not Gaston Moore. I know a lot of people want to talk about Gaston Moore and how good he looked. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I always hate to say, did you watch that video? But it's what are your thoughts? I'm repeating myself. So, the Gaston Moore situation where he he's QB3. I think in Josh Heupel's perfect world, he's going to have his starter – He's going to have the guy in the wings, whether that's George McIntyre or Jake Merkling or whoever, and then maybe a coach. Like Gaston Moore is a guy that could ultimately end up being uh, in the Josh Heupel coaching tree, like like Joey Halsley or Alex Golish, uh, a player on the team, player coach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he could end up in that position. You know, I was thinking just about this topic uh, the other day. Um I think Aaron Beasley would end up making a good coach. You know, he just, he understands the work that, that needs done. Um, you know, I don't know if anyone caught the interview he was on the other day. I can't remember what show it was on, but he did a, a pretty lengthy interview the other day. And he just talked about, you know, how much film he's shown some of the younger guys of him when he first came in, you know, and, and how he's grown and how he was able to grow. And, you know, you just have to be willing to take that coaching. You have to take it serious and you have to put the work in uh, to be great. And if you don't put a crap ton of work into it, you're not going to be great. And we've seen that time and time again, right? Whether it be Jalen Hyatt saying, you know, being honest with himself, you know, saying, hey, I didn't put enough work into this thing. If you don't live breathe and eat football at that level if you're distracted even a little bit you're you're not going to succeed man you got to spend a whole lot of time to be great and uh you know not to get off topic right now buggy too much but uh part of me as a coach uh worries a little bit about hunter over at colorado playing both ways and i just wonder if it's greedy to have him do so. It's such a high play click. Like when you defend everything, you defend nothing. And 
when he does make it to the NFL, talent alone won't be enough for him as a player. And are they doing him a disservice to not let him specialize in a position that he's going to be playing his whole life in the NFL? Uh, I don't know the the full answer to that, but it's certainly something that, uh, I don't know, I've just been pondering a little bit as, as a coach myself. Now, yeah, it's it's there's a reason, the, the old saying, jack of all trades, master of none, right? Yes. And like when you yeah. start playing at, at an elite level, like you mentioned, you mentioned golf like playing golf, like when you play golf at an elite level, there is so much that goes into your swing. Yeah. Like what you do with your hands, with your hips, ball placement. It was up in your stance, back in your stance. So many angles. That's why when you watch the, the PGA Tour, there are shot shapes, man. I remember hearing Tiger talk one time about when he warms up, he's like working the ball left to right on three different trajectories and then hitting it straight on three different trajectories, right to left, three different tra- – it's like, bro, I'm just trying to hit the ball somewhere in the fairway where I can go find it and play my next shot. So when you're when you're working both sides of the ball, that's why, you know, with Boo Carter, Boo Carter is the perfect example. I mean, yeah. when we did that film breakdown and, and you're showing me plays at safety, you're showing me plays at running back and plays at wide receiver, I'm like, man, this guy can play everywhere. But that's going to be – you said the word disservice. I think that is a disservice to him if you did that because he's not going to be able to hone his craft and dial in on on that one specific position. I, I think I think I'm with you on it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, my whole thing is the play count on both sides. You know, it's one thing if you have, you know, a special package where Eric Berry right. comes out and plays quarterback for it or a special package where, where Boo lines up in the slot uh, with Thornton or Squirrel and, and they, you know, run double burners up the middle, you know, with like underneath comebacks or something. But there's a difference between that and fully – fully playing football and uh, i'd be really curious to know how colorado's handling that on the practice field like what do endos look like for hunter uh Mm -hmm. i'm extremely curious and and would love to know i haven't had really time to dive um uh enough into their practices to find that out but i'd be extremely curious to know and it will be interesting to see uh how we handle boo carter when he gets to campus because he certainly is capable of playing both sides of the field we got 250 people watching live. We are one day away, one more sleep away from Tennessee taking the field to take on Austin P in a glorified scrimmage. Uh, don't forget tomorrow, we will be live an hour before kickoff. Fan call in, tailgate show. You guys, the members of the channel, uh, if you got a power T beside your name, you get an opportunity to come on, talk some Tennessee ball with us. If you're not a member, fix that now. Hit the join button down below, right down there, right beside subscribe, a dollar a month. As little as a dollar. If you got a dollar, 99 cents in your pocket, you like the channel, the content, the live streams. Uh, if you like Coach Jay spoiling his plays for tonight on the whiteboard, hit the join button. Uh, maybe we need to put a tier in there where you can still Coach Jay's calls. There but if you go. like the channel, help us out, support it. You guys really do pay the bills around here. Also, you can go check out the brand new merchandise at bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls. Of course, the V-O-L-S letters that Danny White brought back. Uh, everybody, and I mean everybody, is sticking or, or stealing that design. So why not us? Yeah. Why not us? Why not now? V A W L S talking balls merch. Uh, also, I told you guys we're a family, we're a community. You said, nope, Boogie, we are a cult. We need big orange cult merchandise. So that's what we've got for you guys as well. Uh, and then the old favorites, F U G A, Gator Hater, Buck Fama, Beat Bama, Beat Everybody. You can p- check those out. Bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls coach i always every time i make a shirt i say it's my favorite shirt it's my favorite design like the tba i love this shirt the tba jam shirt nba jam logo ripped off talking balls edition i said that was my favorite shirt and then we put out the state pride shirt it became my favorite shirt and then balls by 50 became my favorite shirt but now i really think this may be the cleanest design we've ever done what's your what is your favorite shirt on bonfire uh, I, I, I'm fond of the Vols by Fitty one. I, I like the, the Buck Fama one a lot is super cool. Um, uh, the orange Colt one's really cool too. As you know, I, uh, I got that one, uh, coming my way. So, uh, excited about that, but, uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff on there. I, I shoot, I even want a Kentucky's daddy one. I, I kind of want them all to be honest, Boogie. Um, they're all cool to me. I, I love me some Vol gear. Somebody once said, I've never seen a guy that has his own merchandise wear other people's merchandise as much as Boogie Bentley. 
<laughs> sorry guys sorry i try i try to rep my own merch i wear it a lot uh hayden Castile for ten dollars thank you for the super yeah. chat that is not cheap that's very generous we appreciate that brother uh 10 bucks to say go balls thank you hayden appreciate that tip in the old tip jar uh we are going to wrap things up here at the at about the hour mark still got a little bit more to talk about with tennessee austin p coming up on saturday uh coach when i was asking you what you wanted to get into and talk about one of the things you mentioned was some of the young guys and freshman that played last week against Virginia, David Hobbs, 24 snaps. Mm. Arian Carter played 18 snaps. Caleb Herring, 13. Nico and Ricky Gibson both played 10 snaps. Uh, Jeremiah T. Lander, 7. Ethan Davis, 5. Cam Selden, 3. Khalifa Keith, 2. Uh, and then you had a couple of guys, Dayton Sneed and Nathan Robinson, play two snaps each. Who do you want to see? How early do you want to see them? Uh, I mean, I want to see all these young kids, right? We've been evaluating their film. Uh, T Lander certainly comes to mind as does Hobbs. You know, I think I saw, um, uh, Sammy P earlier in the, in the chat, when we were talking about Texas, talking about, about dropping defensive tackles back into coverage. And, uh, I don't know, Sammy, if you caught the, uh, Hobbs film breakdown, oh, but there's man. a play on there where Hobbs breaks out from the defensive tackle position and defends a wheel route about 30 35 yards downfield and either gets the breakup or the pick i can't remember which one but it is uh top five for plays i've ever seen at the high school level it is absolutely something else but yeah no uh t lander arian carter man all these guys that are young are extremely exciting i want to see pierce flash more i want to see joseph's uh continue to stop the run i think we see joseph's get home this week uh maybe once or twice um continue dominance on that defense line i want to see the deep rotation look good i want to see the young linebackers defend well against the pass uh certainly and i want to see uh the dbs play well i wouldn't mind seeing some of those young freshman dbs get a little bit of run in this game your ricky gibson's your matthews your christian conyer um I don't know if you'll see them until maybe the fourth quarter because I think some of our our second team DBs need need the run and they should get the run, uh, but uh, maybe in some mop up duty, maybe the last like seven six seven minutes, it'd be nice to see, uh, you know, Rip, Ricky Gibson and Matthews and and Conyer. When when do you and pull no the injuries. trigger? When do you yeah, pull no the injuries. trigger and put Nico in? When when do you do that? The start of the second half or the the big conversation again? You float around everywhere on YouTube, podcast, everywhere listening to Tennessee sports talk, and the, the narrative is: well, you got You got to go in the locker room at the half, come out, yeah. make your adjustments, let your start. Why do you give your starters that one series after? What what? Come on, the, the you second. you weird coaches and your super stupid ideas and. Yeah, you're, you you're supposed to play it past halftime, but in reality, I think I would do it um, as soon as I broke four scores. So if I got to 31, if I got to 35, the second that happens uh, in this game, I think I would go to Nico at that point. I saw somebody in the chat asking if we would see Navy Schuler at some point. I wouldn't be surprised be to cool. see. You know, I think he I think he took a couple of snaps last year. I think Heupel's good about that. When the game is over, it's not just, you know, going to be Nico in there. He, he'll, play, he'll play Nico, and then if you get late, late, late in the fourth quarter, you may see Gaston Moore run a series. You may see Navy Shuler, uh, something like that. I think it's cool. I think it's cool, cool to see Navy Shuler out there in that number 21 jersey. That's nostalgia, man. I think, think, you know, we, we, we've we had the conversation a million times, but think of Navy Shuler in Josh Heupel's offense. That would have been fun to it would watch. Have been cool. It would have been really cool to see. It, absolutely. It'd be really cool to see. So um, all those Vol great quarterbacks, you know, I think everyone really thinks back to all the Vol greats because this team is fun to watch, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's just so cool to watch. So you always go to your Alvin Kamara, you know, whoever that favorite Vol is, you know, Peerless Price or Robert Meacham or shoot, even on the defensive line, we were talking about that Butch Jones kind of teams. It's like Khalil McKenzie, you know, Shy Tuttle, Derek Burnett, man, imagine Coach G coaching oh, those kids. God. It would have been freaking a nightmare to see. Awesome to see, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, VFL Willie with a two dollar super. Oh, he dropped a super chat to ask it. Two dollar super chat. Do we ever see Navy Schuler? Uh, thank you, VFL Willie, for the super chat. We just addressed that when we answered that one. Uh, one other thing, one last thing we got to talk about coming up on Saturday that's pretty important, and that is a big time visitor is going to be on hand. That is four star linebacker Chris Cole, 54th best player in the country, top five linebacker, mm -hmm. number one player 
out of the state of or out of the state of Virginia. This this is a big one for me. This is a guy that I really like. I really want. Imagine him alongside mm-hmm. Edwin Spillman in the same class. Now th- this whole thing has been thought to be Tennessee, Georgia, but he visited USC last week. Coach Jay took him out on the yacht with Snoop and all those guys. I think Bronny James was out there with him. Who yep. knows what was going on? Uh, but but he took the visit to USC, and all of a sudden, according to VolQuest, now they put out this morning that the USC insiders think this thing Uh-oh. is now a Georgia USC <laughs> battle. So so my question, Coach, is if USC can swing the momentum that much during a visit. Then so can Tennessee. Brian Jean Marie actually going to be in Salem, Virginia tonight watching Chris Cole's game. Uh, Jerry Max also going to be there visiting his Chris Cole's teammate, Peyton Lewis, Tennessee commit. So both of those, those guys will be up there. And then immediately after the game, driving back to Knoxville, he will be on campus tomorrow for the Austin P game. Why can't Tennessee swing that momentum back uh, on, on his official visit in Knoxville? Decision coming on Sunday. Uh, I think they absolutely can. You always want to be the last person in a kid's ear. Um, I think he really likes the coaching staff at Tennessee. I think he really likes the environment here. Uh, you know, and and they can get them on a boat too, right? They got some they got some river river boats out there on uh on the river uh that to pull them around on. You know, maybe not a uh, Bronny James and and Will Farrell and Snoop Dogg and all that fun stuff, but uh they certainly have a uh, a boat they can throw them on and uh take them fish and take and take them tubing. I was it Nico that loved tubing. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Take them tubing, you know, uh, show them some some Southern hospitality and they'll be all good. Trying to find somebody asking about the time. It is on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So we probably won't live stream that because we're going to do the fan call in show, although we could do the fan. We could start the fan call in show right at it early. We could start yeah, it at like 530, 545, something like yep. that. Actually, let, let, let's. Let's try to do that. We will plan on me and Coach Jay starting the fan call in stream, maybe 530, maybe 30 minutes before the decision. We'll we'll see. That's probably how we'll do it. And then we'll, we'll go all the way through the decision, just like a regular, you know, live stream for a commitment. And then we'll add the fan call in show on the back half. I think that's that's as long as that works for Coach, uh, that's what we will plan on doing. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll put that out there and, and keep you guys up to date on it. MD Vols for $20. That ain't cheap. $20 is very generous, my friend. Says morning, Boogie and Coach Jay. Here's a 20 so Boogie can buy some Talking Balls merch. That is very generous. I'm grateful for that. You know, a lot of people are like, why don't you send me a free shirt, Boogie? Can you send me a free shirt? And I'm like, man, you you guys, I wish you realized that I pay for my own shirts. Like, I don't get them for free. It's a third party uh, that, that prints and ships those. So, uh, yeah, thank yeah. you for the 20. I will buy some Take, Talking it, Balls merch. It takes 15 breakdowns to, to get a free shirt. So, yes, jump and, on and, in. And, and more than that, it takes more than that. It yeah. takes, takes 15 <laughs> breakdowns, a few live streams, a, a season full of post game shows. As go. Coach Jay, takes a lot of work. Takes a lot of work. How much do you get paid an hour, Coach? About 12 cents? I don't even think yeah, that much. I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, two cents. <laughs> Two cents an hour and I get a whole to put lot my of fun. two cents in. Yeah, that's that's what I get. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to get you out of here. We got about three minutes. We'll wrap this thing up. But uh, Coach Jay doesn't jump on the Wednesday shows because he's doing the Friday morning show. So we do our predictions on Wednesday. Now we're going to throw it to Coach Jay for his official Tennessee Austin P prediction. Give us a little something, something. Don't don't be like Xavier. I'm like I'm like all right, X. What's your prediction? Sixty-five uh, to two. We're going to win. Like, how about you tell me something about the game, X? Tell me something about college football when you give me your prediction. My prediction is Butch Jones. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Man, we we ate him alive. I'm just giving Again. you a little, little crap, X. I'm just giving you a little crap. Again, uh, Wednesday, Butch Jones comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That's <laughs> Somebody no, needs to, it... to Photoshop a picture of X and Butch Jones and tweet it. I would love nothing yeah. more. Uh, no, I'm going 56 nothing. All right, now you just did what X did. Give me something. What do you want to see from the game? What's Tennessee going to do? What's the game plan? Nico. Nico is what I want to see. <laughs> Everyone wants to see Nico. I know it's what we want to see, but I want to see Nico uh, for a solid quarter and a half, no no less, right, is, is how much I'd want to see him. Uh, and I want to see him dot up some good passes. I don't want to see him just hand the ball off. And I want to see the young defenders, uh, it, whether that be in the secondary or the defensive line or the linebackers or whatever is like what I'd like to see uh, from the game. And then just, gosh, dang, no injuries. 
mm -hmm. is the other thing, right? Um, it hasn't been bad on that front yet, but it hasn't been good either. So, um, you know, you just kind of cross your fingers in these early games and hope you can make it through. But hey, listen, it's part of every single season. So everyone's got to deal with it and you can't make excuses and you have to fight through them. But uh, God willing and the, the creek don't rise, we'll be okay on that front. It's, it's always such a lame answer to say no injuries, but it really is important coming truth. out of a game like this. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, Ronald says, can you do a membership where you get a, uh, a T-shirt every month? I, that would be such a hassle because I would have to <laughs> email or somehow get in touch with every single one of those members, and then I would have to go in and order the shirt and send it. it it's just way easier. If you guys want merch, go check it out. I'm grateful for every member. I'm grateful for everybody that picks up merchandise, but – that would just be a lot of work that really it wasn't necessary. Uh, yeah. I, I have done a lot of giveaways where I give away a free shirt to just one of the members for whatever type of contest or situation. So we'll, we'll continue to do that, guys. Don't forget, tomorrow we will be live an hour before kickoff for a fan call-in show, also immediately following the game. And then don't forget to change to the schedule that I just mentioned. We'll go live at 5.30 Eastern time on Sunday to do the commitment of Chris Cole and then go right into the regular fan call-in show. It'll be fun night hanging out talking vol football but that's going to do it for this one we're going to get coach jay out of here he's got some work to do uh so we're going to wrap this thing up he is coach jay my name is boogie bentley this is the talking balls network go big orange